Sabes que somos muy diferentes. 
Good evening. I'm Kimberly Ash, the proud interim principal of Breckenridge High School. It is my honor and privilege to have all of you here with us tonight at Breckenridge High School. And right now, I'm pleased to introduce the award-winning Breckenridge JRTC. Please stand for the presentation of colors and remain standing for the pledges. The pledges will be led by Cadet First Lieutenant Manuel Acevedo and Cadet Captain Kevin Ramirez. The colors are being presented by the Brackenridge High School JRTC Golden Female Color Guard. 
The golden female color guard is the 2017 U.S. Army National Champion and the 2020 Southwest Area Champion. The American flag bearer and commander of the color guard is Cadet Major Chloe Bruno. The Texas flag bearer is Cadet First Lieutenant Nadia Barrientes. The guards are Cadet Command Sergeant Major Cassandra Martinez and Cadet First Lieutenant Brianna Gonzalez. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yo prometo lealtad a la bandera de los Estados Unidos de América y la República que representa una nación bajo Dios entera, con libertad y justicia para todos. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Honra la bandera de Texas. Te juro lealtad, Texas. Un estado bajo Dios, uno e indivisible. You may be seated. Again, thank you all for joining us this evening. I hope you all enjoyed the musical entertainment from Mr. John Nieto and our bright mariachi. Thank you also to the fantastic dance, pep, and cheer teams and to our amazing Bragg band. Let's give them a round of applause. I want to thank all of our feeder pattern schools and cluster for joining us tonight. Thank you to Poe, Harris, Green, Jaffet, Herp, Bonham, Riverside Park, and Highland Park for joining us this evening. Be sure to visit their tables. Representatives are here for you. It really is exciting to have everyone together tonight at BRAC, families, students, alumni, teachers and staff, community members, and members of our SAISD family. Thank you for coming. We are so proud to host this event in our beautiful new facility as we move into our final stages of renovation. Superintendent Martinez and Trustee Leshlow have been instrumental in the planning and renovation of Brackenridge High School. It honors our neighbors, location, and traditions of San Antonio. King William, Fiesta, the Riverwalk, and of course, the commitment to excellence of SAISD. Our goal at Brackenridge is to provide students with quality and meaningful learning experiences to prepare them for college and career readiness in a safe and positive learning environment. We are proud to be the only comprehensive SAISD high school to be rated a B by the Texas Education Agency. And we are proud to have received academic distinctions for consecutive years by TEA as well. Our strong academic programs here feature our magnet programs, the Early College High School, the Media Film Institute, as well as the dual language program. We have athletics, fine arts, JRTC, career and tech, and so many wonderful extracurricular opportunities for your students and families to learn and excel as students and as our Brackenridge community. 
It is my privilege to welcome all of you to Brackenridge High School and to have this time to share some of the great opportunities we have here and at SAISD. And now I would like to introduce to you our leader in chief. Superintendent Pedro Martinez joined San Antonio ISD in 2015, bringing to the district a laser-like focus on improving academic achievement. As a data-driven leader with in-depth knowledge of academic reform strategies, he firmly believes students will rise to the challenge with the proper supports. That by setting the bar high, many more students will demonstrate the aptitude and aspiration to perform at higher levels and be well prepared for college and career. Under Superintendent Martinez's leadership, the district has risen, earning a B rating by the Texas Education Agency in the state's accountability ratings for 2019. The district continues to soar and most recently passed its largest bond package ever with a $1.3 billion bond approved by the community in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly introduce Superintendent Pedro Martinez. So I just wanna thank our amazing leader. Um, I was sharing with her that um, she broke my heart because she's gonna be retiring at the end of this year. Uh, so I know that uh, we'll find an amazing leader here in Brackenridge because of course we promoted Dr. Cordova to be an assistant superintendent. So there are great things that are happening here in Brackenridge. So let me start with a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, you know, we've seen your questions and I, I get a lot of questions about where we're at with COVID today, where we're gonna be at for next year. So let me take those on first. So first of all, uh, right now, as we speak, we have about 50% of our students in person. We'd like to bring in more students. Uh, we have, we've been very conservative in our community. Why is that? We know that in our zip codes, our death rates and COVID cases have been at, as much as five times higher than they are in other zip codes. So we've been very sensitive about that. Many of our parents are the essential workers working at HEB, working at restaurants, at hotels. And so we've been very sensitive about that. What's great is that in the community, cases are low, they've stood low. We keep monitoring that. We've been phasing students in. Uh, we have COVID testing, by the way, we're one of the few districts in the country of our size that has COVID testing at every school. When we bring in, when we phase in students, we ask them if they wanna come in the week before to get tested. And many of our parents take us up on that. By the way, as of Tuesday, every staff that wanted to get vaccinated is now fully vaccinated. That is the entire district, everybody. And here's the other thing. We're not stopping there. We started vaccinating our high school seniors last Friday. And because UNH University Health had, actual, uh, had enough doses, they also uh, had their parents getting vaccinated. And so we are now, and I'm gonna need your help parents. We're doing a survey for all high school students, 16 years and older that wanna be vaccinated uh, we want to get that information. We will arrange it. We could do it during the school day. We can bus them. If they're six, if they're under 18, the parents have to be with them. But if they're 18 or older, they can fill out the health forms. But we still want to make sure that we know who is interested in getting vaccinated because we want to make sure, even though conditions are getting safer in the community, we want to stay safe. And so that's that's one of our goals. So that's going to be going on for quite a while. We what we're seeing right now is that. Uh, vaccines for as young as 12 years old could be approved by next month in May. And so right now our focus is gonna be community, high school students starting with seniors, but we wanna work our way down to our, even up to our 12 year olds and that might happen in the summer. I don't see vaccines for younger children being available. I don't think it's gonna be at the earliest, could be at the end of the, of the calendar year. And so again, those again, you know, they're probably not gonna be available. So one of the main questions I get is for next year, what are your plans in terms of in-person or remote? So we're gonna be uh, encouraging families to come in person. We will still have our safety procedures around masks. Again, our staff will be fully vaccinated. We'll be working actively with you to get our community members and students vaccinated that are eligible, but we also will have remote options. Some students will wanna start remote. We will respect that. We will, we will, we will support that. One of our goals though is, is this year, our teachers wanted to keep the children together and I'll tell you, it just was difficult. It has been difficult. It's been difficult for our teachers. It's been difficult for our students in person. It's been difficult for our students remote. So next year, what the plans we have is that we'll have dedicated teachers 
for any student that needs to start remote or stay remote during the year. And we will have, and we'll still connect them to the school, but the information I'm gonna ask of you is what is, what is the challenge that you have for bringing your child uh, in person? And the only reason I'm asking is I wanna know if I can help. But we will respect your wish, but know our goal is to have that option available for you. But we like to have as many of our children in person uh, because we just feel that that's the best way to instruct our children. By the way, computers, Going forward in our district, every child will always have a computer. They'll always have access to the internet and they, and they will be able to take it home. We will never go back from that. So just know that that's gonna continue. And so what I'm gonna share with you now is just a little bit of history of our, of our performance, accomplishments. There's a couple of really cool videos that I want you to see just, to, just for you to know the programming in our district. I'm very proud of Brack Ranger. By the way, we have a really cool surprise to unveil today about Brack, so stay tuned for that. Um, but I really, I really want you just to know what's happening in the district. Again, we want to answer your questions. So let's just start off with, so, you know, in 2019, uh, Commissioner Moret, who was a state commissioner for the entire state, for the first time in our district's history, came down to our district and announced statewide results. Why did he do that? Well, one of the things he shared was that we were a B district, and we knew that because we had projections and we, we knew that. What we didn't know was that our district had the highest achievement gains of any district uh, in the state of Texas. By the way, that was the second year in a row that we showed the highest improvement of any district in the state of Texas. But for him, it was on the achievement side, that was such a big deal. He said he brought the, he brought the Lieutenant Governor, the Speaker of the House, they were in, in the South Side in Shank, and they wanted to announce those results publicly uh, and made just some comments that said that San Antonio IZ is the district to watch. San Antonio is the district that we're gonna learn around how to best support our children that have the biggest needs. And so again, just want you to know, that was San Antonio ISD. That was in 2019. What we know in 2020, remember testing was canceled. If we would have had testing, we were gonna have another record year. And the data points we have from 2020 that I'm gonna share with you also showed rec a record year for last year. And that was in spite of the pandemic and us having to, having to shut down our schools, we were virtual all of the spring semester. And this has been our trajectory. So when I started in 2015, I, you know, first of all, let me quick background about myself. Uh, sorry, this is, you know, so I always feel like uh, I, I, wanna, I wanna value your time. So sometimes I rush myself. So quick background, I've been your superintendent now. I've been blessed to be your superintendent for six years now. I myself, born in Mexico, came to this country when I was turning six. My parents never made, my father never made more than $7 an hour, worked two jobs all of his life. He was, um, you know, I always, when I think of my father, he died at a young age, never even got to know my children. And when I think about him, he worked to bring, to make a better life for myself and my, and my siblings and my, and my mother. He was a talented musician. He could hear a song one time and play it on four different instruments. His dream was to be a musician and he never was able to do that because he was always working in the factories just trying to make ends meet. And so whenever I think about where my family is at now and where I want our children to be at, I think about something about my father, about how do we give people the opportunities? And so my, I'm the first in my family to graduate from high school, first to graduate from college. I'm the oldest of 12, good Catholic family, 10 of us still alive. But because of the decisions I made, everyone in my family has either finished or is finishing college. By the way, different paths, different paths. Some of us went right into the university. Some of us went into the community college. I have a brother who went into the military. He, he was during the Iraq war. It was after 9-11. He said, I need to go into the military. I, that's the best decision for me. Did two tours in Iraq, came back healthy, finished his education, paid by the GI Bill, doing very well now. We have four sisters, in, I mean, four teachers in my family. We have an oncology nurse that works with the most severest cancer patients. So our family brought us up to give back to the community but our trajectory got changed and it was our education. And so when I think about our children, here's the, sim here's the simple thing we want for your children. I'm gonna show you a lot of data points, but what it comes down to is we want your children to reach their dream. I have two children, 11 year old and a, and a seven year old, they're in our district, two different schools because they couldn't be more different by the way, even though they have the same parents, they couldn't be more different. And what I realized is that children, different things inspire them, different things motivate them, just like us as adults. And what we wanna do is to have as much programming as possible, whether it's fine arts, whether it's our, you'll hear about our P-Tech and career tech programs, our dual credit programs, whatever excites your child, I just want them to reach their dream. 
Because at the end of the day, everybody, what do we all want as parents? We want our children to be better, you know, to have a good life, right? To be good people and to be independent, right? To not be living in our house, not be living in our basements. Not that we have a lot of basements in San Antonio, but you know, that's saying that's what we want, right? So that's what I'm hoping that that you'll see that we're trying to do. Um, And so let me show you a few more slides. So one of the things, so going back, when I started, oops. So when I started in 2015, our state was just changing the accountability system and, our, and the state was just starting to give grades to districts. And so what we said, we went to the state and said, tell us what our grade would have been because it wasn't official yet. And what they said was, this was your grade in 2016. And what happened folks, just to be clear, is they raised the standards. So in other words, they made everything more rigorous, including the assessments. And so even though our schools were not doing you know, terrible, but everything got more rigorous. That was good for our children, but guess what? That was a big shock to the system and that was to the entire state. And so, but look at, look at how we've responded and look at where we're at now. By the way, at a B district, we now match our suburban peers of North Side and Northeast. What we knew in 2016 is we had about, thank you. We had about 70% of our children, what we called that were, they were in, in low performing seats across our district. And so that was very, you know, that was something that was very, you know, very concerning for us. And so we've worked hard to improve our schools. Look what we're at today. By the way, in 20 and 2020, our projections were that that number you see in 2019 was going to be down another 70%. We were going to have the lowest number of low performing seats ever in our district's history. And in fact, you know, what we saw in 2019 was the gains were at scale. It wasn't one or two schools. Yes, BRAC, by the way, they're the leader. They tend to be the ones that lead the comprehensive high schools. They were the first B high school, but every high school was projected to be a B by the end of 2020. That was the projection. And what we saw across, even with the results we got in 2019, it was at scale. It was 70%, over two thirds of our schools improving all together. And so when that happens, that is because we're all working as a team. One of the things that I don't have for you, but I'll tell you, uh, we do teacher surveys every year. We've done it for four years in a row. Almost 90% of our teachers participate. Our teachers have never felt better about our district. And even during this pandemic, and I'll tell you, we see it in their work every day. They are working so hard partnering with our parents because we know this is such a difficult time for all of us. Our graduation rates are rising. Our dropout rate has has never been this slow in our district's history. And by the way, they're not just graduating. We have now closed the gap in our students being college ready. What does that mean? Okay, parents, you need to understand this. When your child graduates, especially you know, in the earlier years, they would graduate and go to the community college or go to the university and they would have to take remedial classes. Those classes never counted for graduation. And guess who paid for them? You did. It was out of your financial aid, out of your money. And so that really, for me, that's a sin. And so we closed that gap with the state. Now we're now 42% of our children are graduating college ready. We've matched the state now, but we're not stopping there. Every year, the number is growing. So we want to make sure that when our children finish high school, in fact, what you're going to see, we're very ambitious. We want our children to graduate with college credit. We want our children to even graduate associate's degrees. And we have programs, including here at Bragg, where the students in the early college program, they get their college degree before they get their high school diploma. Think about that for a second. They go to their graduation for college before they, before they go to our graduation for high school. That is what's happening in Bragg. And so you're gonna see a video of programs that we have now across all the high schools. And we're seeing it in, in our children in terms of college opportunities. We have the highest number of students now attending four-year universities. One of the biggest challenges in our community is funding. It's money for the students for tuition. So we have doubled the number of scholarships that our children are generating from five years ago. We hit almost $100 million at the end of 2020. This year already, we're on track to exceed that. So we have, for example, over 20 Dell Scholars. Each one of them got $20,000. We have six Quest Scholars that, are, that, are, that literally get full rides to universities like Brown, uh, universities like Caltech. And so those numbers are growing. And by the way, last year, we only had one Quest Scholar. Last year, we had a small number. In fact, two years ago, we had a single, low low single digit of Dell Scholars. We're now over 20, and the number grows every single year. So what I what I I want you to see, you'll see a video in a second, but what I want you to know is that every one of our high schools now has programs where our children can get college credit. And they're in different industries. So the one thing I want you to understand is these programs that you're gonna see in a video, 
they can be replicated. So if you see a program that exists at one high school, you can say, you know, I really would love that program at BRAC, or I love this other program at this other high school. They're there to replicate. What we want is to get the interest of our children, to get them motivated, and then we can replicate them. Because I'll tell you, there's nothing more important than getting our children motivated and getting them interested in these programs. And I'll tell you, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, just over for, back in 2017, when you look at our children that were graduating with career certificates, we only had 17 graduating. Look where we're at now. And these are children that are graduating certificates in technology, in healthcare. And so what it is, think of it this way, because I get asked this question a lot. So, you know, they say, well, Pedro, what happened to, what about all the voc ed programs? What about all those programs I grew up with? Here's how it works now. It's a relay race. We take them part of the way with our certificates. Then they can go to a trade or they can go to the community college and get the rest of it. And then they can start to work. So they want to be an electrician. They want to be a plumber. They want to be a computer programmer. That's how it works. So they want to be a CNA and RN. That's how it works is, is you start with us. And so what is also happening now is that our programs now, we're making sure the kids are starting to get college credit for it as well. So we're even accelerating that relay race because at the end of the day, everybody, we want all of our children to have that living wage job, to have a great opportunity after high school. And what I tell our students, it's a highway. So you can get off after a certificate and get a job. Hey, do it. You can get off after an associate's degree. By the way, you can get back on and you can get your bachelor's degree. We have students getting master's degrees. So again, it's a highway, but you come back on, but it has to be a highway that's clear that you can see. So that if you want to be whatever that, whether it's in technology or healthcare or in the trades, that you can see the opportunities and that it's easy for you to come back off and on. So this is the video that I want everybody to see. The Tech program is a school within school model. That means that a K through 12 Institute of Higher Education, industry and business partners, we allow students to earn a high school diploma as well as a post-secondary credential. There are several outcomes that we seek when we have students in a P-TECH program. We want them to connect with industry all the way starting from ninth grade all the way through 12th grade and actually connect with industry partners so they get an understanding of what industry they're focusing their work in and they are actually connected to people in the industry. So when they do graduate, they have the opportunity to create that network, those opportunities to get that work-based learning experience to actually um, get a job once they graduate or continue their education. The ideal classroom at Edison P. Tech School of Business is one where students are engaged, highly engaged in order to succeed, where you'll see a lot of project-based learning. You'll see inter students interacting with one another, creating ideas, learning from one another. At the Construction Science P. Tech at City Lunar High School, we actually have an emphasis within two main strands, our construction technologies, construction science and management, you learn more about the sciences behind the construction industry. So you actually get to learn how to become a foreman and be the boss of the worksite. In the power generation and alternative energy pathway, our students will be learning different skills necessary to work on solar panels or wind turbines. When you enter the hallways at Fox Tech High School, the first thing that you notice is that it's different than any other high school because it looks like a hospital. We teach students from day one how to conduct themselves as medical professionals. A student should enroll in Cyber P-Tech at Sam Houston High School if they're interested in information technology, computers, coding, and mostly if they're um, wanting to be able to join the workforce immediately in a high wage, high demand job. In the P-TECH program, students will spend some time here at Highlands Campus and some time at St. Phillips College getting to actually build and fix airplanes, working with electronics on our manufacturing equipment, and working with robotics and animation. It's a really hands-on program. P-TECH students are prepared to graduate from high school with a post-secondary credential. It allows career and technical pathways to occur while they are in high school, preparing them for high-wage, high-demand jobs. These programs as pathways that can be replicated. So for example, at Fox Tech, if somebody wants to be a registered nurse, they will get their associate's degree at the same time they get their high school diploma 
they'll be able to finish their last two years and become a registered nurse with San Antonio College for free. I mean, that's the pathway we're building. And so know that these programs are gonna to continue to expand, but the goal is to give, our options, uh, to give options to our students. And so fine arts, you know, one of the things that you saw with our performances, you know, earlier today, I'll tell you, you know, I, I have so many stories. Every time, you know, when I, I, whenever I see students, especially high school seniors, my first question is, okay, where are you at with your college applications? Where are you with your scholarships? Are you getting enough financial aid? That's always my first question. And then I ask them, okay, have you visited the campus? Have you been there? Because, uh, yeah, Texas Tech might sound great, but, you know, do you know where it's at? You know, Texas State, that sounds great, but, you know, do you know where it's at? Have you been to UT Austin? Have you been to College Station, et cetera? And I'm always amazed that so many of our students, a lot of them are in extracurriculars. They're in athletics, they're in ROTC, they're in fine arts. And they're like, yeah, you know, I don't really have time because I'm so busy with my band. I'm so busy with my dance program. I'm so busy with my athletics. They, our children are so connected to our extracurriculars. This is the reason why we're investing so much in fine arts. So I want you to see this video with Dr. Lavenbeck just to show you uh, the things we're doing. Parents and community members can rest assured that fine arts facilities and programs are a priority in the 2020 bond and the 2016 bond. All of our elementary students have access to a visual arts class, and all but two of our campuses have access to an elementary music program. At the secondary level, all of our academies and middle schools have access to at least two fine arts programs at each campus. And that can be theater, dance, visual art, and any of our music programs, which include mariachi, orchestra, choir, and band. And at the high school level, all of our neighborhood schools have access to at least six fine arts programs. Thanks to all of the attention and improvements that the district has invested in our fine arts programs, uh, we've seen an immediate increase in student achievement. So there's a tremendous benefit to participation in the arts and our community and, and district leadership understands that. Everybody, as a district, we have the largest fine art program of anybody in the region. And we just won a second for a second year in a row, maybe third, uh, the, 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 the highest national award you can win for the quality and the accessibility of our fine art programs. Uh, so we just won that for, I believe, two years in a row now, right, Ms. Sullivan? So again, we, we are doubling down on the arts. The other is our dual language program. So, you know, when I started in the district about uh, almost six years ago, we had two dual language programs. We had Bonham, which, of course, everybody, there was a lot of accolades for Bonham. We had a small program at HERF, but I noticed in our population and our children, we had almost between our children that were current English language learners as well as children that were just exiting, we had almost 30% of our children that were English language learners in one of those two categories, and they weren't doing well. They weren't doing well. I also did a little research. I did a little research about South Texas. And the fact that so many of our children, so many of our parents and grandparents, they would tell me these stories about how they weren't allowed to speak Spanish. They weren't allowed to really celebrate, you know, their heritage and their identity. So I was able to recruit Dr. Olivia Hernandez, who, by the way, is a national expert in dual language. She is one of the top in the country. She, she has a network of all the top authors that she brings to our community, that train our teachers, that actually do sessions for our parents, we started with two programs. I asked, I asked uh, Dr. Hernandez, I said, Dr. Hernandez, she was at Austin, and Austin has one of the largest dual language programs in the country. I said, you know, go slow. <laughs> go slow because, again, you know, we want to we wanna make sure we do it with the community. So, you know, as she worked with our teachers and our parents, what we saw was we went from two schools, then it was like 11. I'm like, oh, that's a little fast, but okay. Then we went to 20, then to 30. Folks, this fall, we're at 60 schools with dual language programs, including the high schools. And they're grounded on our children being biliterate, biculture. That is, and, and they're celebrating the, their identity. They're celebrating their language. And so for us, that is what we want to be as a district. And by the way, we're starting to see many of our English speakers taking advantage of dual language programs. We're starting to see those students of the younger grades starting to outperform the district, including our English language learners. So during COVID, as you know, our community got hit very hard. Um, and it was very disproportionate. And sadly, this pandemic has hit, especially our families of poverty, families that they have to be the essential workers, has hit them very disproportionately. 
our, we wanted to step up as a district. So I wanna show you a video from our technology and our transportation and food service about how we responded during COVID and what's happening with technology. Within the last six, eight months, our district is truly a one-to-one -one district, both with Chromebooks and iPads. Now every student have their own dedicated device for learning. Another term that you hear in San Antonio is flagship classrooms. What those are are model classrooms. They will be equipped with all the technology tools from the infrastructure, the laptop cards, the smart boards, uh, all of the tools necessary for our future vision. Part of the technology strategy was learning everywhere. When they get on the bus in the morning, we wanted connectivity. When they get to school, we wanted connectivity anywhere on their campus. And the last piece of that puzzle was connectivity at home. So as a result of a partnership with the city of San Antonio, at the cost of 27 million, we have now started deploying access, internet access to our students' homes. So we've got the coolest buses. All of them have Wi-Fi, so students can access tons of electronic books through the, the bibliotech website that they can get on, it, on one of our buses. Our buses have GPS, they have a student badge program. All of our buses have both interior and exterior cameras. All of our route buses have AC. And then our new school buses have automatic anti-brake control and anti-skid control. Right now, about 40% of our school buses are propane. It emits fewer toxins. So our students who have asthma or breathing problems, it totally eliminates those for our students. So when the pandemic started, there was a concern about making sure that our students and our parents got food during this trying time. And so I know we called our drivers and all of them wanted to come in and help. We almost had about 100 school buses delivering meals. Each bus would deliver about 250 meals a day. And then we also delivered books as well, which was neat, and technology items as well, too. So I'm going to ask now um, our, your trustee, trustee Leshlow, to come on up. But I'm going to say a few things about him. So I'll tell you, um, of course, he was, you know, he was, he's been on the board since, since I came to the district. And I can tell you that he is one of my best thought partners. And he really, you know, I bounce things off him. So I'll share this quick story. So when our principal, Mr. Weber, retired at Bonham, uh, you know, we had two amazing candidates. And, you know, I could see the strengths of each candidate because we've, we've, been, we've been really heavy, Mr. Nungare, really, we've been developing him for, for a little while now, getting him ready. And I remember, I remember calling Trustee Lechlo, I said, Trustee Lechlo, I'm really torn because these are two really strong candidates. We had, a, we had a school committee, pretty much they were even, they were neck to neck, sorry, David, but you know, they were neck to neck. Um, we told him that he was the clear winner, but they were neck to neck. So, that, so then I, I said, Trustee Lechlo, what, what do you think? And he said, Pedro, Mr. Nongare is the best leader for Bonham. I promise you, you will not regret it. He has proven us right. And so again, that was Trustee Lechlo that was giving me that advice and I was wise to follow it. Trustee Lechlo. Thank you so much for coming to spend some time with us today. Uh, my name is Steve Lechlo. Uh, I'm a former teacher. I'm a parent of an SAISD student. And for the last eight years, I've had the great honor of representing District 1, including Brackenridge High School, on the SAISD School Board. We have come a long way in eight years. Pedro talked about some of the data, uh, but it's not just quantitative data that I have seen as I've experienced the district in district's improvement uh, during my time here. I'm standing in an, uh, a, an auditorium, a cafeteria, filled with natural light. Um, if we were to be here last year, I would have had my cell phone camera trying to read the notes down. down. A, yeah, they know what I'm talking about, all the, all the staff members uh, in Brackenridge. We, we have made such great improvement. And I'm here today to share just a few very quick uh, lightning round highlights. Um, I do have some questions, though, before we get started. So first, um, are there any teachers or school-based staff members for any school anywhere in San Antonio ISD in the room? Well, um, you deserve a round of applause. You guys are heroes, and um, there's no other way to say it. 
you have uh, been so uh, committed and dedicated. You have been flexible. You have been advocates for students and for your colleagues' safety. Um, and you have been um, irreplaceable during the last year. Um, I could not be more proud of the quality of staff members that we have in our school district. So thank you for all of your commitment. We cannot say it enough. I know we don't say it enough, but thank you so much. Uh, without you, we don't know where our students would be. And, uh, and I am incredibly proud uh, of each one of you. So I have another round of applause. And what about parents? Do we have any parents? Man, parents, what a year this has been. Um, I wanna say thank you to you as well for your flexibility, for your compassion, for your commitment to your kids and to your schools and for your advocacy for your students. Um, you guys, in many instances, you guys are the ones that had it so difficult having students at home and having to worry about their safety and their academics. I have a little first grader. I can empathize with everything that y'all went through. And so thank you as well. And lastly, students, Who? any students? So uh, for the students, I, I, I say that I am amazed by you, right? I'm amazed by your, your resiliency, uh, your flexibility, um, I'm amazed by your commitment to uh, looking at an iPad for hours a day just to learn. Um, and more than anything, I'm, I'm amazed by your uh, fluency with digital uh, devices. Um, I had my first grader doing things that I don't even know how to do on, on the iPad and teaching me stuff. Um, and so uh, I am so amazed by all of the students, uh, no matter first grade, kinder through, through senior in high school. So. So thank you everyone for coming. Thank you everyone for your commitment over the last year. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna run through a few very quick highlights. Uh, then we're gonna get on with uh, a surprise that Pedro mentioned and also uh, the, the grand finale, which is a tour of this amazing new facility. Um, so in district one, uh, which Brackenridge contains, this is a list of all of the schools in the feeder pattern. We have amazing schools that feed into Brackenridge. And one of the main reasons why we've, we've been able to see so much success as a district is because we have complemented and supplemented our amazing neighborhood schools with schools of choice. Uh, we know that no two students learn the same. And every student needs different things in order to be their best, in order to learn the best. And so our commitment over the last six years has been to provide these options, both at our neighborhood schools, but also by creating new school models. Uh, you see on here, uh, there are, and it's, I know it's difficult to see, but there are a number of different programs throughout the Brackenridge feeder pattern that, uh, that uh, our students can select and choose based on what fits them best. Uh, now, Pedro went deep into the data uh, but I, I, so I won't go uh, to it much more, but I will say that of all the comprehensive high schools in our, in, uh, our school district, uh, Brackenridge is leading the way. It is soaring like the eagles that it, the eagle that it is, uh, and truly providing an example for all of our other high schools. Uh, I could not be more pleased by the growth we've seen on this campus over the last, uh, over the last four years. That's right. So Pedro talked a little bit about all of the choices that we have now. Dual language, we've expanded to over 60 schools, but it started at Bonham. Bonham has for years been the flagship for uh, culturally immersive and relevant teaching for our students that takes uh, students whose first language is English, uh, it combines them with students whose first language is Spanish and teaches them together in Spanish so that everyone benefits. It really is amazing. Um, we also have a number of other choice programs, uh, including the International Baccalaureate Program, uh, which uh, feeds primarily into Edison or to Burbank and Jefferson, but has a little bit on the Brackenridge side. 
We have a lot of pre-K options and Head Start options. Our commitment to the district really is to expand that as much as we can so that all three and four-year-olds in our district can get high quality pre-K. Uh, but this is one of the numbers that I am most proud of that Pedro did not mention. So here we look, the Brackenridge senior class has accumulated so far, and we're not even to the end of the year yet, over $7.2 million of scholarship uh, scholarship money. And not only that, but you see some of the amazing colleges and universities that our students are going to, are committed to going to. Um, folks, uh, six and seven years ago, uh, it wasn't this, this way. Uh, we, we certainly had many success stories over the past years, but what's amazing about the growth that we've seen is the depth of the class that is getting scholarship dollars, that's going to two and four year universities. Uh, it really is something to be proud of. But numbers are just numbers. And the stories behind the numbers are really what's important. And these are the stories of students. Uh, I wanna highlight just a few students throughout the program uh, today. First, Andrea Sanchez. Andrea is the valedictorian here, and she is a finalist for the amazingly prestigious Gates Scholarship. So only 300 students across the country get awarded the Gates Scholarship uh, every year. And we have a finalist. They haven't announced the, the actual winners yet. We're keeping our fingers crossed for Andrea. Uh, but we couldn't be more proud of her. Another student that we're really proud of is Alexandria Menzau. Alexandria wants to come back home after college. She wants to be a teacher in SAISD. She's had so many amazing mentors as teachers. Uh, this is the perfect world scenario. We, we would love to welcome her back after she graduates. And she is the recipient of the prestigious San Antonio Area Retired Teachers Association Scholarship. Uh, is, it, is Alexandria in the, in the house today? No, no problem. But we are super proud of her. But our students aren't limited to just academic success. Robert Rios here is both an athlete and an academic scholar. Uh, he received uh, several scholarships, athletic scholarships from multiple different schools. Uh, he ended up uh, selecting to go to Our Lady of the Lake, uh, receiving a scholarship worth just a few dollars, $62,000 a year. We could not be prouder of Robert and all of our other students at Brackenridge. Uh, Pedro mentioned that one of the uh, one of the reasons that we've seen such an improvement here is because we have incorporated, implemented an early college high school program, which is really amazing. This is the program you mentioned, where our students can graduate with a high school or with a college associate's degree before they walk the stage at their Brackenridge graduation. It's unbelievable. It saves them a ton of money and it accelerates uh, their their progress into college. Um, we are very proud that Brackenridge houses one of our early college high school programs, and it's just continuing to grow and improve. Another exciting development in the Brackenridge feeder pattern uh, is happening down at Poe, Poe Middle School. Yeah. All right. Poe in the house. So, uh, so, so Poe is transitioning next year. They're accepting applications, and what they're going to turn into is a STEM dual language middle, comprehensive middle school program. It's gonna be a destination for middle schoolers who want the large comprehensive high school experience, but also are committed to dedicated, uh, to dedicated STEM academics. Um, we, we are gonna prioritize the, the Poe community, of course, with our applications, just like we do at all of our choice schools but it will also be open to uh, students throughout SEISD. We're super excited and we're so glad. I saw their booth out there today. We're so glad that they're, they're here. And I wanna highlight next one more amazing student as we work our way down from high school to elementary school. Um, so uh, every year there is a, uh, an art contest that the Texas Cavaliers as part of their, their uh, Fiesta programming they have. 
um, the winner of the art contest gets $3,000, a significant sum of money for their school's art program. And this year we are so amazed and happy that one of our students uh, was selected as the winner. Uh, our student is Kingsley Hernandez. I believe Kingsley is here. All right. Turn around and wave. Kingsley, we are so proud of you. If you can do this uh, in elementary school, I can't wait to see what you're gonna be doing uh, from an art perspective as you grow and develop. Uh, we are so proud of you. Congratulations and thanks for being here tonight. And thank you, mom and dad, for nurturing, uh, nurturing Kingsley's art, art appetite. Um, we mentioned earlier, and you saw the, as part of the presentation, the Lighthouse campuses, which is a really exciting thing. Uh, we have another exciting uh, improvement called flagship campuses. This is just, these are, I know, quick hits. You can't read all the words on the slide, but these are examples of all of the different investments that we are making, commitments to students and to school buildings to provide students with as many options as we can. And now I want to show you a video of a flagship classroom at Highland Park Elementary, which is just a little bit south of here. I'm Steve Lesh. Oh. That's for later. Um, I, I was asking Ms. Martinez while we were watching the video if I could repeat fifth grade at Highland Park so I could uh, take part in some of those amazing things. Um, so we, we have invested so much in our kids. Um, we are so proud of how far they've come, how far they've grown. Uh, but another thing we're proud of, uh, after, after decades of, of true neglect, it's so many of our facilities is how far we have come from a facilities perspective. Okay, so let me talk to you then uh, about uh, the, the last three bond programs. And so the, the voters of SAISD have been so supportive of our district. Um, they have seen the academic performance improve and, and they have overwhelmingly since 2009 voted to approve various bond programs. Uh, in 2009, uh, this is before I was on the board, Bonham, uh, just down the street, uh, was transformed. A brand new building was built, a black box theater, uh, into a space that our community and the students could be proud of. Um, we have continued to see amazing improvements at Bonham uh, since 2009, thanks to our great staff and our great leadership. Um, the 2016 bond then, following that, was really the first large investment that we had in our comprehensive high schools. The 2016 bond brought you this. Now, like I mentioned earlier, if you had been here about a year and a half ago, uh, it was dark, uh, it was uh, dingy, um, there weren't colors. Uh, anyone who went to high school here, going back decades, uh, was going to school in classrooms without windows, without natural light. It, it was uh, an absolute, uh, shame. And now what we have are classrooms with floor to ceiling windows full of natural light. And what we know uh, that science tells us is that natural light is something that allows students to learn better. Um, I hope you stick around afterwards for the tour and you can see some of the amazing improvements that we've made here, but we're not done. What we committed to the voters of District 1 and all of the SEISD community is that we have um, 
in the 2020 bond, we're going to finish all of the renovations at Brackenridge and touch many of the other schools throughout the district and in District 1. I saw a number of questions about, are we going to have this? Are we going to have that? The answer overwhelmingly is yes. Yes, we will have an auditorium that you can be proud of as part of the 20 at 20 bond program. Yes, we will have an updated fine arts facility, a new dance facility. We will have continue the renovation of the classroom so that every classroom has windows in it. Uh, this will continue. This is a commitment from us to you. Um, we're gonna be good stewards of your tax dollars and we're gonna make you proud of the buildings in this district. And more importantly, they're gonna be buildings where our students can learn at their best. Ultimately, all of these investments are for our students. And I know that you're gonna be incredibly proud once you see the continued improvement. Okay, um, so Pedro uh, gave a little, little hint of something special to come. And it's time to unveil uh, a brand new tradition in SAISD. So this tradition recognizes uh, the comprehensive high school that has the highest college, ex college enrollment rate in our district. We know that the key to upward social mobility is a, a post high school credential, whether that's a certification, uh, an associate's degree, or a, uh, a four-year college degree. And so we have made a commitment as a district to celebrate our comprehensive high school that has the highest percentage of student enrollment in colleges uh, for those students who have, have graduated from our buildings. And we are uh, incredibly proud to announce that this year's winner, the inaugural winner of the College Cup is Brackenridge High School. That's beautiful. Wow. Uh, so congratulations, Brackenridge High School. But this is what we know. This is a celebration of our students for sure, right? A commitment of our students and them going, uh, making the commitment to enroll in college. But this is also a celebration of the amazing staff members that we have here at Brackenridge. Thank you to the incredible team here that has allowed the school and our graduates to soar to new heights. That includes not only teachers, but the administrators, the counselors, the magnet coordinator, and the college board advisors. Um, if any of those categories of, of, of uh, employees are in the room, please stand so we can give you the round of applause that you deserve. Congratulations, Brackenridge. Thank you so much to all of you who came out to uh, learn a little bit. We are gonna take questions. Uh, certainly this is a town hall in a town hall format. We had a few that have been submitted, um, but um, it is great to see everyone in person. Um, and, and we hope like Pedro said that that in-person gathering will be able to continue. Um, so thank you for coming. Thank you for your commitment to your students and to your community. And now we are happy to answer any questions uh, that have been submitted. Pedro, you wanna, you wanna come up? So, um, thank you very much, Lo. So a lot of these we, we have answered. Again, a lot of them are around COVID. And again, please, if you have other questions, I think we might've gotten a note card, uh, that, but if not, you can, you can also please stand up and, and we'll be happy to take that question. Um, the main questions that, that I continue to see is around uh, our start for next year. And again, you'll have both options in person and uh, in remote, but our goal is to have as many of you in person as possible. Um, we will have, and this is a really good question. Here's one of the goals we have. We are gonna be aggressive about hiring therapists, mental health therapists, direct service at each of our schools. That is a huge thing we wanna do. Um, I'll tell you, um, we know children are stressed right now. Parents are very worried. We're hearing directly from the parents. We have a parent advisory group that Ms. Salzman and I regularly check in with. And they have shared with us that, you know, their student, you know, their children are, you know, they're just either they're depressed, they feel isolated at times. I will say this, though, on the other side, as more children are coming in person, they're so excited to come to school. 
especially when they see their classrooms and the kind of videos that you saw, that's our vision for all of our classrooms. So that's what you're gonna see over the next couple of years at every classroom. So the children are, you know, they're excited to come back to school. But our, one of our commitments that we're recommending to the board and the board is, is fully supportive is having uh, an expansion of mental health therapists, licensed social workers, and the goal is to have one at every school and to have those services at every school as well as uh, partnerships with our nonprofit partners. So again, that's coming for this next year. That's one of our goals. Um, and the, the other is, Let's see if there's anything else that's here. Um, so one of the questions is, um, will we go back to paper, no more laptops? You know, what our real goal is for next year is that to us to leverage the technology. Um, I'm a big believer that technology, a balance of technology is okay, but I don't know about you parents. I don't like having my children in front of screens all day, especially when they're younger. They just, I think, you know, it's, it, they get hyperactive and they get it just more difficult. Um, so I think a, a, a balance of technology as well as our books, our, our paper, you know, documents, but we want to have a balance of both. We will have Canvas next year and that will continue. And we want to continue to support our teachers. Our teachers have really embraced it. Uh, but it's a, it, we want to balance. But again, our commitment is your child will always have a device. By the way, in some schools, it's two devices because our younger children will have a laptop and a Chromebook as well. So again, that's our commitment. But those will be tools that we use and we'll balance that throughout the day. Those are the main things. And like I said, we're going to double down. Uh, the, there's one question about cybersecurity. So you saw the program at Sam Houston. We're building pathways for cybersecurity across the schools. Some of them will be full p text where the children can get associate degrees, just like in Sam Houston. So know that technology, healthcare, they're the two biggest industries in our city. We are expanding our program significantly. When you saw the certificates, we're expanding quite a bit in both technology and in healthcare. Uh, so that's the numbers that you're seeing grow. And again, the goal is it's a relay race. And then we can pass our children over to uh, help them to get into the community colleges or other training programs to get them their full certificates where they can start working or if they want to continue their education, that's going to be our goal. So let me stop here, see if there's any other questions from the audience. And again, please, yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. So no, again, know that we're doubling down on the arts. So I completely agree with you that if anything, I want them to be even stronger than ever. Uh, you will see more investments in the arts. Uh, and by the way, we are investing now more to make sure our children have the equipment, the uniforms. We even have now tutors that are coming in to support our children. So no, we're going to invest more. So, so for us this year, I really do see us, we're at the other end of COVID. Um, I mean, that's really what, what I'm going to be very optimistic. And so I believe this summer, not only will we have full athletics, we will have full fine arts. Um, but by the way, again, parents, I'm going to keep announcing this. This is why I need your help to get our children vaccinated. Because as you know, many of those programs, we have programs across all grade levels, but in the older grades, there, it's even more, there's even more programming, it's more active. And I really want to get our children vaccinated because that way we can send them on those competitions, whether they're within state, nationally, we don't have to limit any of that. So again, that's all I ask is, is allow us to help you to help our children get vaccinated so that again, there's no limits to them. But I agree with you, sir. We're going to double down on the arts. You will see us coming back stronger than ever. You have my commitment. So the steps we're taking is we're going to continue to invest. And you're going to see it as, as we finalize our budget that we will continue to invest in the arts and we're going to work with our teachers to make sure those programs are, are coming back strong. So more to come, I, I promise you, more details to come on that. Other questions? Yes, sir. Because for safety reasons, he went to Lanier. 
He can qualify as a Navy SEAL. Or when we open the campus again, are you going to bring the father and that you program back for all these kids that do not have a father and open it and open for the daughter that don't have a father in their life? We need to bring that program back. So first of all, um, you know, that was one of my favorite programs. Just so you know, you know, when I came to our district, I really loved seeing that program. I had seen small versions of it in other districts, but I really love how big it was here. So you have my commitment. I know Ms. Salzman is listening as well, that we will engage our fathers uh, because I'll tell you, that was some of, some of my favorite events. When we brought our fathers together, we're able to share stories. Um, so again, you know, please know that we're committed to bringing that back. And again, folks, we really want to, this next year, we want it to feel, uh, I don't want to say back to normal, I want it to be even better, but I want to bring back some of these programs stronger than ever. So know that that is going to be our commitment. Other questions? If there's no other questions, please take advantage of the tours. I'll tell you, um, I've been to Breckenridge quite a bit. And when I saw the new classrooms and I saw the new hallways, and what's really cool is that we still have a spaces that are not finished yet. So you could literally like go to one side and see this space is not finished. You go to the other, this side is finished and you can see the difference. It's like a before and after. So I want you to take advantage of that. You can see the amazing learning stairs we have now. So again, there are some amazing things happening at this school. Look at them. Uh, these are gonna be state-of-the-art classrooms. And again, no, every one of our classrooms over time, you gotta give us a little bit of time because it takes a little time, will be state-of-the-art. That's our commitment. The video you saw at Highland Park, that's a model classroom for other classrooms. Uh, and we're going to continue to, to invest because, again, we want our children to be excited. Please take advantage of the tours. Again, um, I want to just celebrate Ms. Kimberly Ash. She's been an amazing leader. She was filling big shoes as we promoted uh, Dr. Cordova. So, again, Ms. Ash, thank you, ma'am, for your leadership. All the accolades and, and your team's accolades, well-deserved. So with that, I'll hand it right back to you, ma'am. So first I wanna thank Trustee Leshlo and Mr. Martinez. This is gonna, this trophy is gonna stay here at BRAC. So thank y'all so much. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see a short video as recorded by Trustee Steve Leshlo. It's a short uh, virtual tour of the building. Hi, I'm Steve Leshlow. For the last eight years, I've had the distinct honor of serving as a school board member for SAISD, representing District 1. Welcome to Brackenridge High School, home of the Eagles. There is so much history in this campus and in the surrounding community where generations of families have called Brackenridge home. <laughs> Brackenridge is situated along the beautiful San Antonio River. The original Brackenridge was founded in 1917. The original structure was demolished and replaced in 1974. Bond 2016 has now brought Brackenridge into the modern era with beautiful design, modern technology, and features that continue to tell the story of the rich history of this school. One big difference that students, parents, and community members will notice when they arrive at Brackenridge High School is the new exterior. The front facade is bigger and bolder. New windows line the east side of the school and give the bigger classrooms ample natural lighting. Visitors will also enter a secured area just inside where they will be able to provide their name and purpose of their visit. This is an exciting addition to the campus and will keep everyone safe. The cafeteria and main mall areas were completely renovated and now boast a big learning staircase, which is becoming a standard feature here at San Antonio ISD. The learning stair is intended for lectures, classes, collaboration time, and more. It's a college atmosphere type environment that students will really enjoy. A magnificent big screen monitor overlooks the staircase with beautiful features below like columns decorated in bright colors that point back to the rich cultural heritage of San Antonio. Step inside our classrooms and you'll find bigger spaces, more square footage for learning, and when needed, to spread out into small collaborative groups or to work on individual projects. These classrooms and science labs meet the Texas Education Agency's standard design protocols and 
SEIST's unique policies. The GO Center is our college-bound area for students to apply for scholarships, search for their dream school, and to talk to counselors about post-high school plans and college preparations. One thing that's phenomenal about Brackenridge High School is its school spirit and pride. That pride is reflected in the colorful, brightly lit hallways that will carry future generations of eagles and continue building the rich history that's present throughout the campus. Brackenridge also offers business information management, computer science and programming, health science, law enforcement, marketing and entrepreneurship, advanced placement, dual credit, and an early college high school program. Come check out Brackenridge High School. We promise there's a place for you here and we look forward to meeting you. So thank you, Mr. Leshla, for our virtual tour. But if you would like to take a little walk around the building, if my absolutely amazing assistant principals would raise your hands and wave a little. Find one of those fantastic associate and assistant principals. They will be your tour guides this evening. And in closing, I, I just want to extend my thanks because I never get to say thank you enough to my fantastic associate and assistant principals. I never get to say thank you enough to my fantastic Brackenridge staff, teachers, Brackenridge family. I also want to let you know that the senior class in the back is selling refreshments. If you are a Brackenridge family or any SEISD parent and would like to get registered tonight, Registration is available right here in our beautiful new computer labs with fantastic staff ready to serve you to register your student for Brackenridge or if you are one of our feeder principals and schools that are here. I want to thank again our cluster principals for being here tonight. Douglas is also here tonight as well as our other feeders. Thank you so much for being here. I want to thank all of the district support staff who came to show support for Brackenridge, for our Brackenridge families and community. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for coming to see the beautiful building. I want to thank my beloved Brackenridge Eagle students. They always come and shine, as Mr. Leshlow says, they always soar high. I want to thank them for the entertainment for the hosting, for the greeting, for being with us this evening after a long day of learning. Thank you to my Brackenridge students. I wanna thank our assistant superintendent and former principal of Brackenridge High School, Ms. Yesenia Cordova for all her support. So tours are available from an assistant principal. They will be in the back. I want to thank all of you for being with us tonight. I'm so proud of Brackenridge. I'm so proud of the beautiful new facility that is so deserved by the faculty, staff, community, children of Brackenridge. Thank you for coming tonight. Welcome to Brackenridge. <laughs>